Hello, my name is Maria Needling. I am a member of St. John's the 23rd Parish here in Port Washington in Sackville. Welcome to today, day four of the week of Christian unity. And you Bethlehem are by no means the least. Though small and suffering, we lack nothing. Today I will be doing four readings then a reflection, and then a self-reflection, and then a closing prayer. The first reading that I will begin with is from Micah, chapter 5, verse 2 through 5, and 7 through 8. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathra, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient times. Therefore, the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born and the rest of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord, his God. And they shall remain for now, his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth, he shall be peace. If Assyria invades our country and treads upon our land, we shall rise against its seven shepherds eight men of royal ranks, and they shall tend the land of Assyria with a sword and the land of Nimrod with the drawn sword. And we shall be delivered from Assyria if it invades our land and treads upon our borders. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the nations in the midst of many peoples like a lion among beasts of the forest, like a young lion among flocks of sheep. When it passes through, it tramples and tears, and there is none to be delivered. Your hand shall be lifted above your foes, and all your enemies shall be destroyed. Our second reading is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. In green pastures, you let me graze. To safe waters, you lead me. You restore my strength. You guide me along the right path for the sake of your name. Even when I walk through a dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are by my side. Your rod and staff give me courage. You set a table before me as my enemies watch. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Our third reading is from the first letter of Paul, Peter, excuse me, chapter two, verses 21 through 25. For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, 
but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. For the last reading, it is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 32 through 40. Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourself that do not wear out an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also your heart will be. Vigilant and faithful servants, gird your loins and light your lamps and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and for, find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour of when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. And now for a reflection. From the small and lowly city of Bethlehem, the Lord, the Son of God, made his entrance into the world. From the womb of a humble vigil, village girl, he too took human flesh and chose to live his humanity in obscurity and simplicity. He became a grain in 29 the field, yeast in the dough, and a small ray of light to our eyes, and that light has filled the earth. Out of the obscurity and the Ephrata has come a ruler, the shepherd and guardian of souls. And though he is our shepherd, he became the lamb who carried the sins of the world that we might be healed. Though of little significance among the great clans of Judah, Bethlehem was made great because of the birth of the shepherd of all shepherds, the king of all kings. Bethlehem, a name that means the house of bread, can be a metaphor for the church that brings to the world the bread of life. The church, the Bethlehem of today, continues to be the place where the weak, the powerless, and the small are welcome because in her each has a place. The gathering of these grains becomes the harvest. The united yeast becomes a powerful force. The concentrated rays becomes a guiding light. In the midst of political turmoil, a growing culture of greed and the abuse of power in this world, Christians, like others in the Middle East, suffer persecution and experience a sense of marginalization, living in fear of violence and unjust. Yet they are not afraid because the shepherd walks with them, gathering them into one fold and making them a sign of his loving presence. United, they are the yeast that leavens the batch. In Christ, they find a model of humility and from him, they hear a call to overcome divisions and to be united in one flock. Though there are few, in their suffering, they follow in the steps of the lamb who suffered for the world's salvation. 
through though few, they are sure in hope, lacking nothing. And now I have the self-reflection. I wanted to give a self-reflection on one of the readings today, one that really resonates with me, and that is Psalm 23. I feel it is just such a beautiful, comforting message. And I often wonder if Christ recited these, this message when he was suffering. When I let my mind settle and I close my eyes and I think about lying in the green pastures of God's and walking down the path that leads straight to him by still safe waters, these are such reassuring words to me. And um, to, know, to know that no matter what happens, each day my soul can be restored. I can start fresh with him and with his mercy. And to hear those beautiful words, they, to know that he is always by my side, no matter what. And um, no matter how hopeless, or how devastating something is, I know he's right by me holding my hand. And I just hope that in my final days on this earth or in my final hours that somebody would read or sing this Psalm to me. I, it just would offer so much reassurance to me knowing that he is preparing a banquet for me and so much love overflowing. I, this psalm just reminds me of how much I need Christ every day, and I, I can't do it without him, and I'm nothing without him. And for our closing prayer, Good Shepherd, the fragmentation of the little flock grieves your Holy Spirit. Forgive our weak efforts and slowness in the pursuit of your will. Give us wise shepherds after your own heart who recognize the sin of division and who will lead the church with righteousness and holiness to unity in you. We ask you, Lord, to hear our prayer. Amen. Thank you for listening in today, day four. And... Have a good day.